Good morning, my name is Jocelyn Ramirez and I'm going to be presenting my gut microbiome lab. To introduce my project, um, we're going to be talking about what a mac gut microbiome actually is and in general what a macrobiome is. So a microbiome is the collection of microorganisms, um, whether it be composed of bacteria, bacteriophages, fungi, and viruses, etc. present in the gut of an animal. But in this experiment, we were ex extracting um, samples of um, gut microbiomes from fecal matter. In most cases, it is linked to the health of the actual um, organism or individual correlated to um, bowel cancer, slash Crohn's disease, allergies, autism, gastric cancer, and type 2 diabetes. And those are just um, several examples of the linkage between their health and um, gut microbiome present in their gut. And in one of the studies that I read it was done by George and Giard, and it was on the obesity, the role of gut, gut microbiomes in the obesity of individuals. And they stated that the bacteria causing weight gain are thought to induce the expression of genes related to the carbohydrates metabolism, thereby leading to greater energy harvest from the diet. So they were eating more and more leading to obesity um, they argue that obesity is much more complex than that. So they stated that um, gut microbiomes through the diet and um, probiotics, antibiotics, surgery, and fecal transplant has the potential to uh, majorly impact the obesity. So they found that the, um, the patients who demonstrated obesity having um, restricted diets and had an increase of the portion of bacteriodotes using the 16S RNA um, sequencing over the period of 12 months, which correlated with the weight loss. So we know that once they started getting rid of those um, micro gut microbiomes, um, they saw a change in the weight of the patient. The gut, gut microbiomes and autism, the correlation between the two, they found that there being the GI symptomology, uh, they did notice the significant portions of children with um, autism spectrum disorder uh, did have did suffer from that uh, GI gastrointestinal um, disease, and uh, they said that that could be linked to irritable bowel syndrome, and then um, the increased um, permeability of the intestine, and uh, they did have like I said higher prevalence of the irritable bowel syndrome and GI disorders. Uh, the question that we were basing our experiment on was uh, disorders, um, kidney versus uh, epilepsy have an impact on the gut microbiome present in the gut. And we hypothesized that those individuals with uh, epilepsy will have um, similar gut microbiomes present in their gut. And those with kidney diseases would have uh, similar um, gut, gut microbiome is present in their gut. So to in order to actually execute this, we did um, take samples from four different animals, specifically four dogs. Um, so we took samples from a female miniature poodle who is 13 years old, weighing about 12 pounds with epilepsy, and their diet consisted of Trader Joe's foods and wet foods and have been eating this for about two to three years now, and there's no cohabiting animals. The next patient uh, with epilepsy was uh, a uh, male Irish terrier, four years old, weighing about um, 50 pounds with epilepsy. Uh, so the diet was not announced when reading about the demographics um, and has been eating whatever diet for about two years now and cohabits with another cat. So the two animals that uh, had kidney diseases were two females. One was a yellow lab, 14 years old, um, five uh, in five months, weighing 75 pounds with kidney disease and eats a veterinarian kidney as, um, assistance food. So it's like, I'm assuming it's prescribed food from the veterinarian and has been eating this for about eight months now and cohabits with two other dogs. And then the other one was, a, 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 like I said, a female uh, with uh, Lysum as Apso Mix um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, 16 years old, weighing about 21.5 pounds, um, has a decreased kidney function and eyesight, and eats low proteins and various other brands. 
um, and has been eating this for about three years now and cohabits with uh, one other dog. And um, so the way we did do this was in a series of three steps. So we uh, first isolated the DNA from the fecal samples um, using a commercially available um, kit called Kyogen. And it is specifically designed for the isolation of the DNA from stool. Second, we uh, um, quantify the DNA using the UV absorbance spectral photometer and then normalize the DNA samples by doing dilutions. Um, lastly, we used the qPCR to uh, quantitatively amplify a very specific region of the uh, bacterial genome called um, 16S rRNA using a group of specific primers so that we can determine the uh, uh, relative portions of the various groups of microorgan microorganisms present. In doing so, we did um, follow the um, procedures accordingly based on the lab manual. Um, uh, we didn't alter anything uh, that was told for us to do. Um, so yeah, using the Kyogen spin calons, the, uh, the UV by the qPCR. Um, the reason why we use the qPCR because compared to the PCR, it is quantitative and quantitates the amount of product it started with. And um, specifically, we used two kinds of primers. In the beginning, we used uh, bacteria and fungi, uh, both forward and reverse primers. Um, so they were used to target a sequence before the DNA polymerase can bind and start synthesizing the DNA. Um, we did use a positive control in the beginning in that first qPCR round, but we did not use negative controls for our um, preceding rounds of qPCR. Um, there was also a something, pre something present in the mix. Um, it was called SYBR green. And the reason why is because it binds to the double strand of DNA but not the single strand of DNA. Um, little uh, little lights, fluorescent lights, are emitted from the C CYBR in the solution. Um, and it's simple and it's uh, it co it's cost saving. Um, the signal intensifies uh, intensifies correlates with DNA ampli amplified, thus the initial sample input amounts. So that's um, how we know the initial sample that it started with. In doing so with the um, procedures, we did get results. Um, it was to um, isolate the uh, DNA and purify it. So in doing so, we did use the um, the um, UV spectral for photometry to um, isolate the DNA and to quantify it specifically. Um, in order to isolate, we use the chiogen spin columns. So to quantify, there was a ratio that we used. It was a DNA protein ratio because DNA is absorbed at 260 nanometers and protein is 280. Um, so for our ratios, in order to be completely purified, it had to be at a um, approximately 1.8 for DNA. Um, and that's how we measured the purity. So our first two samples, um, the two dogs with epilepsy, did show ratios that were 1.8. One um, the first one, for example, was uh, 1.82. The second sample was 1.81. So they were re relatively purified. And then our next two samples with, were the two dogs with the kidney disease. Um, one was 1.4, one was 1.5 which did have some protein contamination since it was less than um, 1.8. And then our um, DNA concentration were relatively high, except for uh, one dog with epilepsy, one dog with kidney, kidney decreased kidney function. Um, um, the dog with epilepsy, sample 855, did have a high concentration of DNA present was which was 58.5 and then our lowest concentration was with the dog with decreased kidney function which was at a concentration of 1.7. In our um, first round of qPCR using the bacteria and fungi, um, for the first thing that we did discuss was the um, negative control values which play an important role in this experiment um, determining contamination. So the negative controls in the bacteria and fungi were higher than the rest of the values, meaning that there um, was no contamination. 
and the positive controls are um, not consistent in terms of one was higher than the other, meaning um, there was more activity in um, the, ba the bacteria rather than the fungi. And then um, um, based on our um, bacteria fungi ratios, uh, when determining the correlation between the gut microbiomes and uh, the animal with the, the certain disorder or disease, um, the ratios between the, do the two dogs with epilepsy were way different, meaning there is no correlation based on the presence of the actual gut microbiome. And then um, it, we couldn't really tell for the, the, the two dogs with kidney disease because uh, one of them um, did not have the anti-log value, which was the bacteria. The second round of qPCR, we used the primers actinobacteria and Firmicute. Um, so uh, in this round, along with the preceding round, um, we did not have a positive um, control. Um, so the negative controls um, for actinobacteria was lower than the rest of the samples, meaning that there was some sort of contamination. Um, in the Firmicute, we couldn't tell because the negative control did not um, show any um, value. Um, so the ratio, Firmicute and bacteria, the ratios again did not correlate. And again, we couldn't tell with the kidney disease dogs because of um, the absence of value in the Firmicute. Um, so yeah, the ratios, for the epilepsy was one of them was 41.23 and the other one was 0 0.003 and that is a huge difference. For our third round of qPCR, we used bacterial deets and verma. And um, for the negative the negative control values, it was one for the bacterial dots was uh, 31.71 which was, again, lower than the rest of the values, um, signifying low in contamination. And then um, we did not get a negative control value for the Verma bacteria. Shields were way off for the dogs with epilepsy, and um, we could not tell for the dogs with kidney diseases. Um, in terms of the extraction of DNA, it was not successful in terms of quantity. Um, each sample in the DNA was either rare or essentially absent, and the concentration was supposed to be below 20 to be considered abundant, um, and between 20 to 25 was um, to be rare, and above 25 was essentially absent. So we our values were majorly uh, 20 and above. It was very rare when we had a value below 20. The quality of the DNA, however, as mentioned previously, was um, successful. Um, all the values were good in range between um, 1.82, 1.4, 1.81, and 1.5. And then when it came to our actual hypothesis, the data did not um, support the hypothesis in which we hypothesized that there would be a difference in the gut, mi gut microbiomes present in the dogs with epilepsy and in the dogs uh, with lowered kidney functions. Um, we thought that there would be similarities in the gut microbiomes present in them and as we saw in the ratios uh, the ratios were way off in the categories of those two um, diseases um, in terms of uh, performing the same experiment in the future uh, we did discuss um, with our professor during lab about uh, next gen analysis which would allow us to see all the bacteria in the sample um, to potentially find a correlation since in this experiment we were uh, hindered to only um, a certain amount of uh, primers, um, we had to find those specific ones present, but there's so many more, so in using NextGen would just allow us to um, get a overall God-eyes view of the uh, gut microbiomes present.